Henry VIII is known as one of England's most notorious kings. However, he is mostly known for his six wives, and many of these met their downfall at the hands of the king's desperate quest for a male heir or a son. Henry's first two wives, Catherine of Aragon and Anne Boleyn, would fail to provide him with a son that he greatly desired, instead giving birth to daughters, who would later go on in their own right to rule England as Queens Mary I and Elizabeth I. It would be the king's third wife who would provide him with the son he wanted, Edward VI, however at a great cost, with Jane Seymour passing away due to complications from childbirth. Edward VI would be Henry's direct heir, despite being the king's youngest child because of his gender, however what isn't as well known is that Edward wasn't the only son that Henry VIII would father. Catherine of Aragon and Henry did have a son called Henry, who was given the title the Duke of Cornwall, but tragically he would die within weeks. But there was another son. This child was the infamous king's illegitimate son. Today we look at Henry VIII's forgotten illegitimate son, Henry Fitzroy. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Henry Fitzroy was born in June 1519, being the son of King Henry VIII and his mistress, Elizabeth Bessie Blount. His mother was one of Catherine of Aragon's ladies-in-waiting, and Henry was known to have had an affair with her during his marriage to Catherine. He was given the title Fitzroy, as this dates back to the Anglo-Norman times, meaning son of the king, and previously had been used by English kings for their illegitimate children. The child was conceived allegedly when Catherine of Aragon Henry's wife was approaching her confinement with another of Henry's children, and she would give birth to a stillborn daughter from this in November 1518. Bessie, the child's mother, was described as rather beautiful, and was also renowned for her skill in music and dancing, being a frequent player in court. During her pregnancy, Elizabeth Blount was removed from the king's court to avoid any scandal and was taken into a priory. We don't know for certain when Henry Fitzroy was born, but allegedly the king was ecstatic when he heard of the news that he had a healthy son, and it assured his doubts that he could produce a son. He allegedly visited the boy a number of times, as well as the child's mother, but Bessie Blount would never return to court. The christening of the newborn child was never recorded, but Cardinal Thomas Wolsey was present at the service, and he was named his godfather. Henry VIII later decided to abandon all his tact and discretion, proudly showing his newborn son to everyone at court. He openly acknowledged the child as his own son, and seemingly was proud of the illegitimate child, which is different when compared with other medieval kings and how they treated these children. Henry Fitzroy's upbringing still remains a bit of an uncertainty. We don't know how much contact he had with his father, the king, however the boy may have been part of the royal nursery, and may even have been part of court life. At the time, royal households were always changing and shifting, so it's likely that Fitzroy lived in many different households, as was customary for Henry's other children. King Henry would begin to shroud his illegitimate child in lots of titles and peerages. On the 7th of July 1525, at the young age of six, Henry Fitzroy was made a Knight of the Garter in a ceremony at St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, and in the same month he was elevated to the peerage, with his father creating the titles of Duke of Richmond and Somerset and the Earl of Nottingham for him, and he received these at a huge and great ceremony. He had arrived by barge from Wolsey's mansion, and came with a group of knights, squires and gentlemen. The rooms he stayed in were immensely decorated, and lots of members of court came to see Fitzroy's elevation. The six-year-old child knelt before his father, the king, as Sir Thomas More read out the patents of nobility. It was the first time in around 400 years that an illegitimate son had been raised to the peerage. Such ceremonies and great offices had never been held before by any subjects, let alone a six-year-old illegitimate child, which means that the king probably prioritised Fitzroy's gender over his illegitimacy. This meant that he could possibly have selected Henry Fitzroy as his successor, excluding Mary I, the king's oldest child, from her rightful inheritance and being the next monarch after Henry VIII. Interestingly, the title of the Earl of Richmond had been held by Henry VIII's father, Henry VII, and his own grandfather, and the Duke of Somerset had been held by members of the Beaufort family, Henry's grandmother's relatives. Between 1525 and 1529, 
Fitzroy lived mostly in Yorkshire, at Sheriff Hutton or at Pontefract Castle, and he was well educated in Latin, Greek and French, and was also taught music. He was also considered an active child, who enjoyed being outdoors, rather than one who had his head buried in a book. Showering Henry Fitzroy in titles continued, as the King made him the Lord High Admiral of England, Lord President of the Council of the North, and Warden of the Marches, towards Scotland, which basically made the government in the north of England his, with him controlling part of the border regions. Fitzroy was raised like a royal prince, and he was described as a most handsome, urbane and learned young gentleman, very dear to the king on account of his good manners, and an ambassador later said how he resembled his father. On the 22nd of June 1529, Fitzroy was also made the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, and there was a plan in place that could have seen him being crowned King of Ireland, but it was deemed that making Ireland a separate kingdom, whose ruler wasn't also King of England, could create another threat to Henry in England. Now for every royal child, the matter of who they would marry was taken very seriously, and this was the same with Henry Fitzroy. Initially a plan was suggested that he could marry his own half-sister Mary, later Mary I, to stop the annulment of Catherine of Aragon and Henry's marriage, and to strengthen his claim to the throne. The Pope even gave special permission for this bizarre and strange marriage concept to go ahead, half-siblings getting married, in order to prevent the King breaking from the Roman Catholic Church. At the age of 14 though, Henry Fitzroy married Mary Howard, the daughter of Thomas Howard, the third Duke of Norfolk. It's thought that the marriage was arranged by Henry's second wife, Anne Boleyn, as a way of getting more favour for the Duke of Norfolk. Fitzroy and Mary Howard's marriage was never consummated, but the young boy had everything at his feet. He was the son of Henry VIII, and clearly loved and valued by him. When Anne Boleyn fell from grace, it was said that he was one of the peers, who sat on the jury at her trial, which condemned her to death for incest, adultery and treason. He also was present at Anne Boleyn's execution which took place on Tower Green, inside the walls of the Tower of London. Henry Fitzroy though wasn't the healthiest child. In July 1536, he became ill and rather sickly before he passed away. He was reported to be ill with consumption, which sometimes is linked to tuberculosis or a lung issue. It has also been suggested that he could have died of the pneumonic plague, as the symptoms he's shown such as the fever, headache and weakness and shortness of breath are all linked to what Henry Fitzroy had before he died. He died on the 23rd of July, 1536 at St James's Palace. It has been said that Henry VIII was inconsolable when hearing about his son's death and that he wanted his dead son's corpse taken far away. Not much attention was drawn to the death and his father-in-law the Duke of Norfolk ordered that he be taken in a closed cart for a secret burial. Instead the body was placed in a straw-filled wagon and two attendants followed the wagon at a distance. His body was taken to the Cluniac Priory in Fetford, however after the dissolution of the monasteries, he was interred in Framlingham Church in Suffolk. Many historians think that if Henry VIII had not had a son in Edward VI, it could be very possible that Henry Fitzroy, should he have survived, would have become Henry's successor and would have become King of England after Henry VIII died. It's a remarkable thing to think about, which would have caused great chaos and probably rebellion in the country. It's clear that the king did value his illegitimate child, especially with regards to the immense titles that he was gifted, but ultimately Fitzroy's life came to an end prematurely at the age of 17. His future however could have been incredibly important, and could have changed English history forever should he have not become ill. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.